From commonly held mixed animal groups to the downright bizarre, mixed species enclosures are found at zoos all over the world. But are they as straightforward as they seem? And can they ever really work? The most basic mixed species exhibits simply take an enclosure designed for one species and add in a second species which is very similar. When considering the animal's needs this makes a lot of sense because the housing, feeding and spatial requirements have already been accounted for. Financially this may be a relatively cheap option for a zoo because little or no alterations to the exhibit will need to be made. For the animals, there's the potential of a positive welfare impact because the social complexity of their group has increased. Not only will they have within group interactions, but also that with another species too. This however won't necessarily be positive, even for those species which naturally associate in the wild. There may be competition over food or resources, there may be the risk of inbreeding between closely related species, and there may be chronic and ongoing stress effects on either one or both of the species. Edinburgh Zoo have done this successfully within their Living Lynx exhibit, where they have capuchins and squirrel monkeys living side by side. Their on-site research centre has allowed for long-term monitoring and making recommendations to reduce the stress and potential aggression between those species. Where there is no research department, that monitoring falls onto the keepers, so it's important they have a good understanding of animal behaviour. From my experience with lemurs, we noted a variety of differences in behaviour, both between the species and also between individuals within a same species. It's also worth noting that the size of a group and their breeding status can have a very real impact on the behaviours that they display. For breeding behaviours in particular, this can lead to higher levels of aggression, resource guarding, and even the potential for some species to try and steal the young of others. This could lead to zoos having to make some really tough management decisions. If a mixed species enclosure breaks down, do you separate off one of the individuals? Do you have another enclosure which you could move them into? Or alternatively, do you look more closely at the behaviour? Do you stop breeding one of the species? While well, this offers potential benefits for the individuals you house, allowing them to interact with other species in a more relaxed way with lower levels of aggression, it's possibly going to affect both your own collection plan moving forward and that of your impact within the breeding programs of the wider zoo industry. Now a far more dynamic and interesting exhibit for visitors is one which combines species which have very different behavioural repertoires. Rather than simply housing a selection of deer, birds or primates, having species which occupy different niches within the same environment. Aquatic alongside terrestrial, ground dwelling alongside arboreal. All of this will better utilise the space and be much more interesting for the visitors. Now it's likely that there will be less interaction between species, as much of their behavioural range will take place in different parts of the enclosure. You will likely require different housing, feeding areas, enrichment and areas to rest for each of the species which is housed there. Bats, birds and arboreal species can be offered elevated areas, walkways and platforms which are simply unreachable from ground dwelling species which might be found nearby. With an understanding of the behavioural traits of the species you house, you can design dens, tunnels or burrows which, while possibly accessible to an arboreal species, is unlikely given their behaviours. Even with more similar species, and those which share the same abilities, you can still design enclosures in such a way that individuals are able to self-separate. If we consider that a smaller species is more vulnerable or more at risk of competition or aggression, this may be important to ensure their access to food, to prevent a larger or more dominant species from simply guarding that resource, or possibly simply as an area to rest and seek refuge. Designing an enclosure with these self-separation areas makes a lot of sense, but is also going to be an indicator of how well the mix is working. If a species is spending most or all of its time in this area where the other species aren't able to interact with it, it's a good indicator that the concept and the implementation of the wider mixed exhibit simply isn't working. But there's a very big problem here. There's an assumption that it's the little guy that's the one who's at risk. But for the larger species, this type of design simply doesn't allow them to seek refuge of their own. A mixed exhibit housing bears and primates seem to work incredibly well. 
But once the primates had been removed, the behavior of the bears changed quite drastically. They spent less time on the floor and in their dens and much more time up in the trees. Now, it would be wrong to try and explain this behavior as a focused research project on the before and after of the exhibit change wasn't done. However, it's worth noting that at least anecdotally, the behavior of these species does impact the other in both directions. There are many examples of mixed species exhibits which simply failed. These resulted in stress, injury, and even death. And it's worth noting that even comparable exhibits across two different collections resulted in very different outcomes. But the same is also true for single species exhibits, whether that be the individual animals or perhaps the way in which an enclosure is designed or those species are managed. Keepers will still have to constantly monitor those groups in order to ensure the best possible welfare based on the existing knowledge within the zoo industry. So what do you think? Do you think mixed species are worth the extra effort that the keepers have to put in? I mean, zookeepers are just so busy as it is. Just look at some of the stuff that they have to do here. 